The subcommittee will come to order. Without objection, the chair is authorized to declare a recess of subcommittee at any time. Without objection, members of the full committee who are not members of the subcommittee are authorized to participate in today's hearings. This hearing is entitled Investing in Our Rivals, Examining U.S. Capital Flows to uh, Foreign Rivals and Adversaries Around the World. And uh, I do want to apologize for the fact that this hearing is taking place while the Republicans are holding their leadership elections. We scheduled this, and then uh, apparently in determining when to have their leadership elections, Mr. McCarthy didn't think that this was the most important thing to to avoid uh, scheduling against. Uh, still, obviously, we would this would be a better hearing if we had the full participation of the my of the current minority party. Um, although Mr. Gonzalez uh, is small, not numerous, but mighty, and will represent uh, his party well. Uh, I'll. Uh, I, I, it's my understanding the uh, that Maxine is is coming or is not coming. Maxine will be here. So I will recognize myself uh, for four minutes, and then I will uh, turn to Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, over a year ago, we had a hearing on China, Inc. This hearing builds on that. American, it, Americans are investing in uh, Russia to some degree, not uh, much now, and substantially in China. There are 262 Chinese companies listed in the United States. And of course, Americans are free to invest in Hong Kong and Shanghai, including our index funds. Uh, eight Russian firms uh, were suspended from trading the United States. Some $83 billion of American capital has been invested in Russia. Uh, this raises three types of issues, macroeconomic, investor protection, and national security. As to uh, macroeconomic, um, capital is very good for a capitalist system. Uh, we send uh, $1.2 trillion of capital to China. Some would say, well, why don't we just stop? Well, China provides $2.1 trillion to the U.S. economy. But not all capital is equal. Equity capital does more, risk capital does more to build, um, a, uh, to build a capitalist economy. We send $1.1 trillion in equity capital to China. They send only $700 billion of equity capital to the United States. Don't take my word for it that equity capital is more important than esteemed institution. The U.S. Congress has decided to spend $200 billion every year on our capital gains allowance to encourage equity investment. And, uh, but for some reason, we subsidize not only Americans who invest in America, but we provide that same capital gains allowance to those investing in the Chinese economy. Uh, I just want to point out that's not on us. That's another committee that's responsible for that. Investor protection. We have the PCAOB uh, in Hong Kong now. Congress passed uh, a bill I sponsored in the House, the uh, Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act. Um, that passed. China has agreed in principle and now work is going on in Hong Kong to see whether they will ap actually implement that uh, important legislation. Uh, we'll know more at the end of the year. Second on investor protection, we have the VIE structure. You think you're buying Alibaba stock. You're not. You're buying Alibaba Cayman Islands, which then has a contractual relationship with a shell company in China, which then has a contractual relationship with Alibaba. We've uh, got to see what risks that poses for investors, and particularly wonder whether index funds should be investing when they say they're investing in the biggest companies in the world. Alibaba Cayman Islands is not one of the biggest companies in the world. Um, and to say that with little uh, uh, investigation, uh, capital should be deployed through this VIE structure is questionable. And it's also uh, uh, questionable whether uh, index funds should go outside the United States, invest in the Shanghai or Hong Kong exchange, perhaps in Chinese companies that have deliberately avoided the PCAOB by delisting uh, from the United States. Um, and uh, we then turn to the national security issues. When Americans invest in Chinese companies, that creates a lobbying interest here in the United States to support the success of those companies and ultimately China. 
In addition, it can create an incentive to transfer technologies to those Chinese companies, which are the subject of U.S. investment. Uh, we should know what, uh, chi what Chinese companies are raising money here uh, by changing our rules to say that when there's a private placement, even if they don't choose to use Regulation D or one of the other safe harbors, that there's some registration in the major deals. So not only SEC, but under uh, certain circumstances, other uh, U.S. government agencies can look at private files and see what's coming in. Likewise, we ought to see um, when a hedge fund or a private equity fund already is required to file a form PF with the SEC, we should know whether they are getting substantial amounts of, uh, of Chinese capital or Russian capital. Uh, I recognize that. myself uh, for five minutes. Uh, a few comments I want to make first. First, it is this Congress and this committee that put the pressure on passed the law that is getting the PCAOB access to the audit work papers. Right now, they're in Hong Kong to see whether this agreement is actually going to be implemented. And if it's not, then our law uh, will require that uh, many of these Chinese companies need to be delisted. Um, the second is, and I think uh, Ms. Chu pointed that out, that the VIE structure is designed to evade Chinese laws or avoid Chinese laws, however you phrase it. But it puts our investors in a position where they think they're buying Alibaba, a big Chinese company, and instead they have no shareholder rights. Uh, they have, except in Alibaba um, Cayman Islands, uh, which raises the issue of whether we should allow a company to sell stock in our country calling themselves Alibaba when they're really Alibaba Cayman Islands, not the same thing as the big Chinese company. Um, and we have to look and see whether it is appropriate for low-cost funds and index funds to be investing in companies either that have fled uh, American markets to avoid the PCAOB or employ this VIE structure. Because um, when you're painting, you know, you're, when you're just not, when you have no money to investigate what you're investing in, you're just doing it on the basis of an index, uh, those are risks that you probably shouldn't subject American investors to. Uh, and in particular, Alibaba is one of the biggest countries in the world. If you want to invest in the big countries in the world, invest in Alibaba. But Alibaba Cayman Islands is not one of the biggest companies in the world. And so you don't actually meet the, the qualifications uh, for the index. Um, uh, Ms. Uh, Chu, um, I'd like you to comment on the idea of whether um, these low-cost, paint-by-the-numbers index funds uh, should be allowed to invest in, in uh, VIEs that are not operating companies, but rather uh, a company in the Cayman Islands that has a relationship with a company in China that then has a relationship with Alibaba or the other big Chinese company. Thank you. And no, I don't think that this should be an option for U.S. investors, least of all because of investor protections, um, but also because of the possibility that some of these companies are engaged in activities that are contrary to U.S. national interests without the knowledge of, again, the investor. Uh, the problem with index funds is that they are beholden to, to profit. Um, the index funds and the index, well, and the index providers specifically operate using a set of technical and financial uh, criteria. So criteria like market cap or liquidity or size when they evaluate which companies, which securities to add into an index or which ones to remove. So for example, Russian securities were all removed from MSCI, FTSE Russell, mm -hmm. S&P Dow Jones, all these indexes in early March of this year. But they weren't removed because of ethical concerns mm -hmm. and because of US sanctions. They were removed because they were virtually worthless. Mm -hmm. And there are already um, policies. I, 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 I do want to move, move on with my question. Okay. Uh, and, uh, uh, professor, um, should uh, index funds uh, be investing in companies that were listed on American exchanges and then delisted themselves or were delisted because uh, they wouldn't allow access to the uh, of the PCAOB to their audit work papers. No, there should be a full transparency. I, I agree with the testimony of my fellow panelists uh, and apparently the Senate.
sentiment of uh, most of the uh, congressional leaders here. There should be this full transparency. I, uh, I happen to think that the spirit of what you're asking about should also be addressed to even U.S. investors, which is not your purpose, I know, today. Right, is, uh, Professor, your mic is still up. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I share the, the spirit uh, and the content of my fellow panelists. I, I do think that there should be greater transparency uh, and uh, that uh, even sophisticated investors are, are representing uh, a lot of individual uh, innocent people's money. I'm, go I'm going to try to, 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 to sneak in uh, one more question, and that is, in November of 2020, the SEC required that um, in public offerings, you have to disclose the unique in, uh, uh, risks that investors face investing in China, the VIE structure, the rule of law questions. Uh, should we also require that these same risk factors be disclosed, uh, and this is required by one of the pieces of legislation under consideration today, uh, that these same risk factors be disclosed to those investing in private placements? Yeah, I think they should be. I will say in the case of Alibaba came in, I actually read the 500-page registration papers uh, not in preparation for this, but when it, was, when it happened, I thought that the volume was misleading itself. It, in fact, uh, allowed uh, for, sh for uh, uh, Jack Ma, the, the then CEO, to be um, emperor for life, with the exception only the Chinese government could remove him. He, he had founder shares that, that nobody that I know in the U.S. invested in the company realized he had, uh, but it was just buried in so much stuff. So sometimes I will say, uh, Mr. Chairman, we have disclosure, and it's still not transparent. Uh, it was buried in the fine print. Thank you. My time has expired. Now turn to the gentleman from Connecticut, Mr. Himes.